One thing that can make answering analogy questions on the SSAT especially difficult is encountering a word that you don't know. When this happens, don't panic. Instead, try one of these four strategies. Our first strategy for analogy questions where you don't know the words is to try to eliminate one or two answer choices. Now this mindset is gonna help make a question where you don't know the words a little bit less intimidating. You do not have to find the one correct answer. You just have to try to eliminate as much as possible. This is important because of how the SSAT is scored. You get a quarter of a point off for any question that you answer wrong and zero points off for any question that you leave blank. This means you should not guess randomly, especially if you're running out of time. But if you can eliminate a few answer choices, the odds are going to be enough in your favor that you should still risk a guess. Being strategic with your guesses may help you earn just a few extra points. Our second strategy for analogy questions where you don't know the words is to keep parts of speech consistent. So for example, what that might mean is in an analogy question where there are two verbs, the matching answer choice should also have two verbs. So let's try this out on a practice question. Our analogy here is a voter is to constituent. And let's say I don't know what the meaning of the word constituent is, and I can't figure out what part of speech it is either. I'm going to have to rely on the word voter and my knowledge that that is a a noun. So now what I'm going to do is check out all of the first words in the analogy answer choices and see are any of the rest of them nouns. If not, I'm going to eliminate them. So A, dismay, I know is a noun. B, anxious, I know is an adjective, particularly from this O-U-S ending. So I can eliminate that option. C, imitation, this T-I-O-N ending tells me that that is a noun. Jubilation, same ending, tells me that that is a noun. And then enchanting, I know, is an adjective. So I'm going to eliminate that option. Now, if I was taking the SSAT, I could feel safe to guess because I've eliminated two options. Now, I'm going to give you a hint and tell you that constituent is also a noun. And let's see if we can figure out the correct answer just with that knowledge. A, I'm now going to look at the second option here, consternation. That same word ending tells me that that is a noun. So that answer can still say. C, imitation is to emulate. Emulate is actually a verb. It has an A-T-E ending, which tells me it's a verb. And then D, jubilation is to excitedly. That L-Y ending on this tells me that it is an adverb. So I can actually eliminate C and D based on that. And I get my correct answer to be A, dismay is to consternation. These two words are synonyms, just like voter and constituent are. Those are synonyms as well. Now, if you're a little bit confused on how we're using word endings to figure out the parts of speech, you might want to go ahead and watch our synonyms when you don't know the words video for more practice with that. Our third strategy is to look for relationships between the answer choices. Now this is a little bit backwards from how you would approach a normal analogy question. Here, you're gonna create an analogy sentence for the answer choices and see if that pattern seems possible for the question. So let's try this out with a practice question. Our analogy is grizzly is to ursid. And let's say I don't know what the word ursid means. So I'm going to try creating an analogy sentence for each of my answer choices and then trying it out and seeing if that seems possible for my question. So for A, motorcycle is to scooter. Well, this one is a little bit tricky. I can't necessarily create that typical analogy sentence. I do know they're both types of transportation. But because that relationship isn't super clear, this seems like it not, might not be my best option. All right, for B, bread is to cake. Well, I'm having a similar problem with this one. It's hard for me to create an analogy sentence. They're both just kind of types of baked goods. But there's not a super clear connection or relationship otherwise. So again, that doesn't seem like it's probably going to be my best answer. For C, leopard is to feline. Well, this one, I can definitely create a relationship sentence. A leopard is a type of feline. So does it seem possible that a grizzly is a type of ursid? Ursid is maybe kind of the scientific name for bears. Well, maybe that does seem like it could be possible. So I'm going to leave that option. D, kangaroo is to joey. Well, for this one, a joey is a young kangaroo. So could an ursid be a young grizzly? Well, I know that young bears are typically called cubs. So 
this seems like it's maybe not the best answer. So I'm going to eliminate that one. And then E, milk is to dairy. Well, milk is one example of or kind of a type of a dairy product. Um, so could a grizzly be an example of or a type of ursid? Well, again, that seems maybe possible. So if I had to choose on the SSAT between C and E, again, I've dramatically increased my chances rather than blindly guessing between the five options. The correct answer for this one actually is C. Similar to leopard being a type of feline, a grizzly is a type of ursid. Ursid is the scientific name for that kind of category of bear. Our fourth and final strategy is to see if the words are more similar to or different from each other in both the analogy and the question and the answer choices. This strategy works best with words that you kind of know, but maybe aren't 100% sure of the definition. So let's take a look at this in a practice question. Our question says, enigma is to mystery. So maybe I've heard the word enigma before, but I don't really exactly know what it means. But I do know that it's sort of similar to mystery. I think I've heard them in similar contexts before. So now I'm going to go through my answer choices and see do the words seem similar to each other or different from each other. So A, furtive is to obvious. Well, maybe, again, maybe I don't know exactly what furtive means, but I think I've heard of it in kind of a negative context, which is going to make me guess that these are different, which is actually true. Furtive means very secretive, so those would be different. That means I can eliminate that option. B, mentor is to advisor. Well, these are definitely going to be similar to each other. C, necessary is to extraneous. Even if I'm not 100% confident on the word extraneous, this extra root gives me a hint that these are going to be different. And they are. Extraneous means extra. It's not necessarily stuff that's necessary. So I can eliminate that option. D, spark is to flame. Well, these two are definitely going to be similar, right? They happen in similar contexts, so I'll leave that. And then E, laceration is to heal. Well, maybe I don't know exactly what a laceration is, but I think I've heard of it in the context of like something with medicine. And so I'm going to say that those are maybe similar, which they kind of are. A laceration is actually a cut, so it is connected to healing. Um, it's maybe not going to be our best fit, but it is connected to healing. So again, even if I can only eliminate A and C, I still have a much better chance of choosing the correct answer here. The true correct answer for this one, enigma and mystery, these are actually synonyms to each other. So if we look at the options that we have left, B, mentor and advisor, are going to be the best synonyms here as well. So we have a few final reminders before we wrap up this video. First, as you're answering these questions where you don't know the words, make it your goal to just eliminate as many answers as possible. If you can use the parts of speech trick, determining the relationships between the answer choices, and determining which answers are similar to or different from each other, you should be able to eliminate one or two options, and then you can feel free to guess between the remaining choices. Second, if you'd like even more practice with these questions where you don't know the words, check out our strategies for synonyms where you don't know the words. It'll give you some new techniques that might come in handy on these questions as well. You should now have just a few more strategies to help you get a few more of those analogy questions correct.